Man, this is lifestyles of the poor and unfucking fortunate. But I tell you what, but 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 bitch, we got this. Yeah. So yeah. what was crazy about that whole situation was um um which I've so I've said this before, it's not that I haven't said it, but I was originally supposed to write hard out here for a pal. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I was originally supposed to write hard out here for a pimp, but I was with my baby mama. I was a fresh father. I didn't have that mentality. And I'm a writer. I'm not one of them super duper creative writers that can just pull a thought out of nowhere and write about it. It has to be something I've either done, I went through, I have knowledge about, or something that I can relate to. So, you know, I'm sitting here feeding a baby, watching fucking Family Guy. Right. And Paul calls me like, hey, I need you to come to the studio right now. John Singleton and Terrence Howard are here. And they're trying to come up with this song for this movie, this 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 lead theme song, a lead song for a, a soundtrack. And I was like, fuck John Singleton, that's fucking Boys in the Hood, fucking Terrence Howard. God, oh, man. legend, yeah. I'm like, oh my sure. God, I'm on my way. So of course I'm handing the baby off to the baby mama, like I got to go. And um, you know, I balled to the studio and at the time I was living in East Memphis, the studio was downtown. So that was like a little 15, 20 minute drive for me. So now I'm like balling, like trying to think of like, what the fuck do they want me for, for a fucking, you know, no offense, but a, a mostly hoodish movie. Like right. I'm the white boy of the fucking, what, right, what, right. what, what, what do they expect me to write? Like, it's just, what about, what about, because at the time I'm over here working on like songs like Good Old Boys and Crash the Club and, and um, we get there and uh, Paul gives me the rundown, Jimmy, I mean, uh, Paul and uh, Terrence Howard and, uh, um, Singleton? Yeah, John Singleton. Sorry, yeah. I went by. No, Rest in peace, boss. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. Yeah, for sure. Rest in peace, John Singleton. Um, they're all sitting there in the studio, and they're like, all right, here's the idea. They ain't even got the beat really yet. Nothing. They just got kind of a, a skeleton of a beat. Just the basic, like, the hi-hat, the kick. They didn't have no music to it. They just had this rhythm. And they were like, it's basically about this pimp. He's got these hoes that just don't want to act right. And he's trying to break into the rap game. And they give me the whole rundown of the movie, the, you know, the storyline or whatever. And I'm like, okay, all right, I'm listening to this shit. And, so they give me this kind of, you know, skeleton type beat. And they're like, all right, go in the other room, the writing room, which we had a whole separate room. You just go in there and just kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm sitting in there vibing this shit, you know, for 30 minutes. And all like, all like my phone's going off. This bitch is calling me. The baby needs formula. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, woman, I am sitting here with fucking award-winning producers and directors. And you're sitting here telling me about some fucking diapers. But I know we got four more left. I'm only going to be up for a couple of hours. Yeah, yeah. Let me get this done. Type this shit. is just the type of person my baby mama was. And I don't give a fuck how many of these videos she watches and she looks back on it and thinks she goes, God damn, I was a bitch. Um, shout out to baby mama number one. <laughs> but um, I just couldn't come up with nothing, bro. I was just blank. Just because, like you said, your mindset my mindset wasn't was on there. family was on right. family time. It was like dad, like dad life type shit, husband duty type shit. And I was still young. I mean, this was 20, 2005, 2004, So I was twenty two years old at the time. Fresh off, finally famous. Right? Fresh off, finally famous. Yeah. And um, for some reason, Fraser was just stopped by the studio that night to drop off some beers. He had a little couple of blunts to smoke. He just happened to walk into the little writing room first because usually that's where everybody was hanging out. Yeah, yeah. That's where we smoked and drank and shit and then all the business happened in the studio. So he walks in. I'm sitting there by himself, by myself. He's like, what's up? What you working on? I was like, man, I, nothing. I can't fucking figure this shit out for nothing. He was like, well, what, what you got? I said, bro, John Singleton, Terrence Howard are in the other room. He's like, for real? I said, yes, I'm working on a movie. I can't come up with nothing. He was like, well, let me, let me hear the beat. Let me, let me hear it. What's it about? I told him the whole storyline. And they sat there for no bullshit. No lie. I give you your motherfucking props, boy. No fucking sat there for about 30 seconds. And they said, hard-headed hoes. I want to be a rapper. He said, man, look. It's hard out here for a pimp. When you're trying to get the money for the rent. Mm, that easy. He goes, uh, with the Cadillacs and gas money spent. We'll have a whole lot of bitches jumping shit. I was like, and I just yep. walked the fuck off. Yep, he just walked I, I in. Walk, I, walked, yep. I walked into the studio. I grabbed Paul, I grabbed Juicy, I grabbed Singleton, Terrence Howard. I was like, look, man, this is not my song. I said, Fraser Boy just walked in and in fucking 20 seconds had the hook wrote. And I wrote that motherfucker down real fast as he was writing it. And uh, sure enough, he went in there and he dropped the hook. He, he rapped it. You know it's hard out here mm -hmm. for a pimp. When you're trying to get the money for the rent. He rapped it. 
Yeah. And then they had Taraji P. Henson come in and she killed it. Like, and I was there the night she came in and, you know, we I was like, oh my God, that was the best assist I've ever, I mean, that was an assist to just a, yeah. Yeah. And it was a it was a Gary Payton and Sean Kim man, situation. It seriously was, bro. <laughs> that was man. That, salute that to Fraser, boy, man. Yeah, salute to Fraser, man, because that was an assist that I that, and and it was a very uh, 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 a very professional assist on my behalf. I feel it, it wasn't me hogging the ball and trying to, you know, I got three four OGs in here trying to make some magic and I'm holding them up. So well, my, my my this is what's funny that I that I've never said on camera. So. Um, in real life, I was the only person holding them up for making that song. And then Fraser Boy came in and made the play. All right. The movie comes out, drops, wins the Oscar. In the movie, when they're trying to record Hard Out Here for a Pimp, there's music playing next door at DJ Paul's house. And they go next door to knock on the door and be like, hey man, can you turn down the music? It's me playing in the background. Lil White, we ain't playing. It's playing in the background. Oh, shit. So I was slowing them up from making the song in real life. And somehow I was slowing them up in the storyline. <laughs> in the right. movie yeah. with the song choice they chose. Because Paul said it was supposed to be something else. And they were like, no, nah, we're, we're promoting Lil White right now. So let's play We Ain't Playing in the background. And we'll oh. give him that shine since he didn't get to be on the song. That's love. That's and love. That was Paul, them, but that was them incorporating all their artists. And the, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how Paul and Juicy used to work. They would, they would intertwine shit. And, man, when I figured that shit out, it was like years later. I was like, holy shit. I was like on Mushrooms or something when I figured it out. I was like, damn, bro, that's deep. Yeah. I was holding them up in real life and in the studio. So fast forward. Yeah. Fast forward eight months, and the Oscar goes to Three Six Mafia. They win. They, they fucking win the Oscar over goddamn Dolly Parton. Yeah. Okay, and um, I can remember I just moved into my new house. I just got like a fat ass check. I just about moved into this new house on this golf course. I'd only been there for like three days, and the cable guy hadn't showed up yet. So I didn't have no TV on to watch the, the Oscars on. Mm -hmm. So I'm sick. So my partner, Big John, shout out to John. Me and, me and him have always been the biggest Three Six Mafia fans. He shoots over to my house, and he's got it pulled up on his phone where you can hear it. He's got the app or whatever. And I mean, I, don't, I remember he, he just had the oh, it pulled up on the radio like uh, yeah, yeah. the Oscars were on the radio, or he had something. And this was too, it wasn't no app. This wasn't smartphones yet. It wasn't yeah. no smartphone. He yeah. had like a BlackBerry or a fucking something. Uh, yeah, something. And um, we were all crowded around this phone, bro. In this nice big ass house, just crowded around this phone. Everybody, like, shh, 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 shh. and it was Queen Latifah. You know it's hard out here for a pimp, and I lost it. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, the assist of the century just won a motherfucking Oscar. And I remember going to my bedroom, bro, and crying my eyes out, just crying. And I mean, like, I didn't even get the Oscar. I didn't care, but the team did. You know what I'm saying? No, for sure, y'all always and, like y'all um, won it. As yeah. soon as Frazier got home, this Fra Frazier was real as fuck for this. As soon as Frazier got back from L.A., he came straight to my house. He was like, "Here, hold that. Just hold it." And I just held it. And I was like, <laughs> "What the fuck, bro? Like, what yeah. the fuck? How did we get a ten-pound chunk of gold from this?" He was like, bro, thank you. I was like, no, shit, thank you for help. Dude, you you did that, bro. I was in, I was, I was gonna drop the ball and fuck yeah. up everything. He was like, nah, man, we did that together. That was teamwork. That's number love.